Hi, Attorney Steve Vondren, Licensed Practice Law in California and Arizona, and we are back to the Attorney Steve Whiteboard. All right, so this video, we're talking about burdens of proof. You may have heard this, and you, you may have just got served with a lawsuit. You may be filing a lawsuit, and you may be wondering, who has to prove the case? Who proves what? Is it Do I have to prove it, or do they have to prove it? Now, normally when a plaintiff files a complaint, okay, here's your plaintiff and they file a complaint, normally in most cases, the plaintiff is going to bear the burden of proof, okay? In other words, they're gonna to have to prove what they're saying in their complaint is true, okay? They're gonna to have to come up with evidence, evidence, okay? Some things are easy to allege and hard to prove, like uh, fraud, in, intent to defraud, specific actual fraud. It sometimes can be easy to allege and hard to prove. But the burden of proof is on the plaintiff, okay? Now, in general, let's talk about burden of proofs for just a second, because a lot of you, a lot of you have probably watched a lot of TV and you see criminal law cases, okay? Usually in a criminal law case, here's my little burden of proof, here's my little burden of proof chart. I know it's not really neat, but this is Attorney Steve Whiteboard. We do the best we can with what we have here. So, but the most demanding burden of proof in the legal system is what's known as beyond a reasonable doubt. Beyond a reasonable doubt, okay? So let's just call that barred, barred, okay? Beyond a reasonable doubt. That means that the, the in, and usually in a criminal case, by the way, it's the prosecutor or the attorney general or somebody that has the burden of proof. It's not your plaintiff in a civil suit. In a criminal suit, it is your prosecutor. It's the person um, charging you with a felony or a misdemeanor. They have the burden of proof to show it beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, I'm not a criminal attorney, so I'm not gonna go into all the little minutia, philosophical conversation about what beyond a reasonable doubt means. I think you know. It means a, a doubt that's, it, it has, it, there really can't be a good explanation as to, as to why a, defendant did or didn't do something it has to be sufficient it's almost better just to recite the rule beyond a reasonable doubt i mean if it, if there's a reasonable doubt something that could be true um, that's plausible then maybe it's not beyond a reasonable doubt so that's your most demanding burden of proof that you'll find in a court of law another one that you often see is what we call clear and convincing okay clear and convincing evidence now this, for example, this pops up in our Department of Real Estate or Bureau of Real Estate cases where somebody is being charged with disciplinary violations in regards to their real estate license, okay? So where you have a, a broker that may have uh, lost trust funds, uh, commingled money, committed dishonest acts of dishonest dealing, real estate fraud, those kinds of things, you end up in this administrative hearing process where you're fighting for your license. In those cases, the standard of proof is clear and convincing evidence. Okay, well, what's that? Well, it's less than beyond a reasonable doubt, but it's more than the next one I'm gonna tell you about, which is the preponderance of the evidence. Poe, we'll call that Poe. Okay, we'll call this C and C, okay? So the standard that normally applies in a civil lawsuit is the preponderance of the evidence standard. Okay, that's usually what a plaintiff has to show. This person committed, this person com committed uh, a fiduciary duty breach, a breach of fiduciary duty. You have as plaintiff the burden to prove that by a preponderance of the evidence. Now what's the preponderance of the evidence? You know, some people call it the, you know, if you think of the hands of justice, it's the more likely than not, it's the 51% versus the 49%. That's kind of what you're looking at when you're talking about a preponderance of the evidence. And this is your typical, and I say typical, this is your typical civil lawsuit here, okay? And that's the typical burden of proof that you're gonna have. A again, in administrative DRE cases, in cases of showing uh, intentional fraud, sometimes you have a higher standard of proof that has to be more certain because there's something more serious on the line. For example, somebody's livelihood, their real estate license, their ability to make money. So that's when it's going to kick the standard up, okay? The more at stake, not to say that there can't be a lot at stake here. I mean, there could be hundreds of millions of dollars at stake here. There's no question, but you know, this is the law 
um, in, for example, administrative hearings in California real estate licenses. And then this is your typical standard across the country for criminal cases. So you can see this gives you the general framework of how it's going to go. Now, when you're filing a suit or responding to a lawsuit, you need to look at the law. There, in, a, in a typical plaintiff's complaint, you could find lots of allegations or lots of causes of action, in other words. You could have a cause of action for elder abuse. You could have one for conversion. You could have one for fraud. You could have one for a breach of fiduciary duty. You could have a cause of action for negligence. So you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna look those up and see if there's any special rules. Um, let me give you an example. Financial elder abuse has some special rules in California where you can try to shift the burden of proof, shift the burden of proof off the plaintiff onto the defendant, okay? Why would you wanna do that? Because it would be nice in some circumstances to make them prove that the transaction was fair instead of forcing plaintiff who may be an elderly uh, citizen who doesn't have the records or doesn't have all the, the memory of everything that's gone on, there may be circumstances where you can allege undue influence and duress and constructive fraud, close fiduciary relationships, and try to shift the burden of proof onto the defendant. So you really need, when you're involved in a lawsuit, to look at the causes of action and figure out who's going to have to prove what, okay? So that's a basic Attorney Steve general overview of burden of proof. So if you have questions in your case, you're getting sued, you, you feel like you have to file a lawsuit, you can't get your issues resolved, give us a call. We can be reached at 877-276-5084 or find me on the web at attorneysteve.net, attorneysteve.net. We thank you for listening. We'll see you again. Have a great day. Bye now.